Harrison, New Jersey is home to the Spanish Pavilion, located a mile and a half from Newark's historic Ironbound neighborhood, an area highly populated by Spanish restaurants. The Spanish Pavilion was opened by a man ahead of his time, Antonio Fernandez. My grandfather was a pioneer in the Spanish cuisine. He opened up in 1964, the first Spanish restaurant in the state of New Jersey. He retired after 10 years, very successful, and then came out of retirement to open the Spanish Pavilion in 1976. Antonio finally retired for good in 1996, leaving the successful Spanish Pavilion to his daughter, Balbina, and her two sons, Jerry and Michael. Table 11, please, Ma. When we took over, the Spanish Pavilion was the place to be. There was a line out the door. Five years later, everything's still going down the tube. It's terrible. The customers complain. You see the same old menu, the same old dishes. You no know, flavor, blend. No flavor. That sauce is good. I don't care. We're like a casual family restaurant, and we have to wear a tuxedo. And you're serving people with shorts and t-shirts. It just doesn't match. It looks like uh, you're in a wedding party in 1973. Michael and Jerry, they don't care anymore. They don't like to put time in the business. Where's my brother? Michael, little by little, stopped cooking. You got to be here more often. And now, he's out of the kitchen, more out than in. I'm dying to have a drink. My staff might complain that I'm not here a lot, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't know what I'm doing. Jerry doesn't do anything. So the mayor's coming to pick up lunch. He's always on the phone. He's always this, he's always that. I'm a councilman in my town. Tomorrow night, we'll celebrate victory. I smell it in the air. And I am out of here more, but sometimes I don't want to be here enough because Michael can get a little tough. Now, what the hell happened to this? Fucking A with the lobster bisque. Oh. Fuck. Screaming and yelling, and I guess it kind of wears you out. You know, there's a real easy solution for this fucking problem. Michael. What? Stop it. That's... Michael, stop it. Michael and Jerry have a lot of differences, and I find myself in the middle. I don't want to hear any more about the situation. That's too bad. My mother is at this restaurant right now just to make sure that my brother and I do not kill each other. What in you? Huh? Nothing. Get out of here. This place needs big time help. I don't know what to do, man. On a Saturday night, maybe I'll do 10, 15, 20 dinners. That's not paying the bills. I still haven't even paid my fish guy. I got to pay my fish guy. We're in the debt over five, dollars $600,000. I'm scared. We can't support our families on this business. So it's a uh, stress. I'll do anything it takes to succeed. Spanish Pavilion is all I got. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? How are you? Somebody died? Did somebody pass away? No. I'm... No. You all look immaculately formal, but tuxedos, undertakers at a funeral. How old are those suits? They are beautiful. Huh? Made to measure. Thank you very much. Huh? Thank you, thank you, wow. thank you. Wow, wow, wow. These guys are stuck back in the 80s. They look like little penguins, and they're wobbling back and forth with their little, you know, little tuxedos. Hi, how are you? Well, uh, slightly underdressed. My apologies. No, you're, you're OK. I'm very nervous about Chef Ramsay coming into the restaurant. I wasn't a fan of this idea. Michael was. And I'm a little nervous. I'm oh. the mom. OK, great. Sorry, first name, excuse me? Balbina. Where's that Balbina. from? From Spain. Oh, wow. Would you like to come to the table? I'd love to. This will be Joe. He'll be your sir. Joe. Welcome to Spanish Pavilion. Very happy to see you. another unique tuxedo. Wow. Thank you very much. You wear this every day for lunch? Yes, lunch and dinner. Anyway. So when did the Spanish Pavilion moment? 1976. Wow. Take me back to what it was like in his day. Uh, my grandfather worked seven days a week. At 75, he would jump behind the broiler and do the meat. I mean, if he were in his prime right now, I know he would be doing a better job than we would. Are you here five days? I'm out a little more lately because I was elected as a committeeman in my town. Politician? Yeah, I enjoy it. I really do. Jerry don't care for the business anymore. If you know this business, you cannot be do politicians or something else. My brother and I both went to Johnson & Wales University for this, and I worked the front of the house. My brother did more of the culinary end. And he's the chef de cuisine. My call him a chef. To me, he's not a chef. He's always playing on the phone instead of cooking for the customers. He, um, well, I don't know if he's the chef, but he's in bath there quite a bit. Thank you. Have a little read. Lovely. No problem. Thank you. 
listen, and no playing around right now. I don't worry about it. We're gonna nail this. Put your phone away. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Ready? Let's start off with lobster biscuit. Okay, Please. sir. Um, I'll go for the uh, brie uh, marinara. Is one of the house specialties. Wonderful. Another dish that people can eat for the chicken and garlic sauce on the bone. Love it. The beginning, I walked in, I thought it was a funeral. Now I'm in Spain. Spain. Yes, you, you've got me back. Yes. OK, brilliant. Yes. I hope you enjoy everything. Yeah, I can't wait. I want to make sure you got nothing to do with this order. I ain't hanging my boys to dry, but I'm so confident overseeing my guys that I got nothing to worry about. These guys have been by my side 15 years. No, go, 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 man, go. Let's see what he thinks. Mm. It just looks disgusting. Very creamy. Is it always this creamy? Yes, it's always creamy. It just looks like lobster was dead before they cooked it. They're from the lobsters from the tank. You want to take a look? OK. Is he dead? No, I think they're just sleeping. He must be dead. We keep a good eye on this. You keep a good eye on them? Surely not. He's fucked. Dead. A dead lobster. No, he's gone. Is he? No. Ooh. What I'm concerned about is everything else in there. They've been feeding off that lobster. Yes. And then they become full of bacteria. Look. That is extremely unacceptable. Dangerous. People could get extremely sick with that. I'll get rid of this right now. OK, please, Good. can you take this? All right, love you, bye. You smell it. It don't smell. That lobster's fresh. Even though it died, it's good. This is my brother. Mike, how you doing? Hey, Michael. Pretty good? Good, I'm doing fine, yeah, thank you. Good. I know you saw a lobster in there that passed away. Well, I try to, we try to check that every day. I was just slightly concerned to see the dead lobsters in there. I try to freeze them right away, and then I make the best from that. OK. You must be busy. Uh, thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. OK. I want to serve you right now the chicken and garlic sauce. Uh, what is all that in there, the grease? Olive oil, garlic. We've got a little bowl. We just drain some of that out. It's like they're swimming. Thank you. Oh, dear. It's like a fucking Exxon Valdez there. Too much olive oil for you. You think there's too much olive oil in there? It's like a heart attack waiting to happen. I hope there's a hospital nearby. The chicken tastes absolutely dreadful. I just want you to taste the chicken. Just taste that. It's, a little, it's dry. You sound like a politician now. Jerry, I'm not fucking around. That's gross. Do me a favor. Can you ask your brother to taste that? Yeah. I want you to try this. What, what's the next dish? Paella. Send the paella. The paella. What did Michael say? He's trying it right now. I'm going to find oh, okay, out. Fine. What do you have to say? I thought it was fucking good. I'll tell him that. Have faith on me, baby. This ain't a normal guy. It's a Brit, huh? They're paying in the neck. He thought it was fucking good. If he thought that was fucking good, then I'm screwed. If you're screwed, imagine how I am. And this is the... Uh, paella marinera. The lobster in this paella. Did it come from the tank? It comes from the tank. Oh, shit. OK. You don't like it. Or would you be so kind to taste it for me? Yeah, no. Badly, badly seasoned. Yeah. It does overcook. This is ridiculous that this pan even came out. Out of respect for your granddad, that is a joke. Give me five minutes, we'll have a chat together. Can I take this? Uh, yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, chef, you like to have some uh, dessert? It's very kind, but I've lost my appetite. Thank you. Are you doing stuff purposely wrong, or is this paella? I mean, is that is overcooked? All right, all right. You go sit and listen. He's right about everything. There's nothing I can do about that right now. I feel utterly embarrassed and humiliated. The way food went out, the way it did, it killed me. Okay, I'm gonna get straight to the point. Shit bisque, dead lobsters, and the paella, the burnt shit at the bottom. This is your grandfather that put this thing together. 
Was he sending food out like that? No. no. What was wrong with the chicken and garlic? The chicken was way overcooked. Maybe the piece you had it was dry, but I finished the plate. Did you cook that dish? No, I did not cook no. any dishes here today. What do you actually do, Michael? Yeah, I don't taste everything, but I try to taste as much as I can. You're the last line of defense. Out of every dish that I had there today, what did you taste of mine? Every single one. At least when it came back. When it came back? If your grandfather was sat on my table today, he'd be beating the crap out of you. I'm proud of what went out today. This is the food I do. This is how they cook it. And I know the food over here is good. You're fucking dreaming, Michael. Hi, how are you? Enjoy your meal, honey. Welcome to the Spanish Pavilion. After an afternoon that included a dead lobster in the tank, a miserable lunch, and a head chef that doesn't cook, Chef Ramsay is anxious to observe a dinner service at Spanish Pavilion. Can I get the chicken and rice? Chicken and rice? I'm going to try the pollo cocote. I'll pick my own lobster here from the lobster tank for you. Hey, boy, come on up. Where's, um, where's Michael? He's just sitting at the bar. At the bar? How are you doing, bro? Good. How you nice doing? to see you. Michael, can we get ready? I'm ready, Jerry. Ready. Let's see how ready you are. No one's really in the back of the house, you know, observing and making sure everything's 100%. I think my brother should be monitoring that, watching it. Despite head chef Michael being absent from the kitchen, dishes are being sent out. There you go. They're here already. Unfortunately, they're on the cook. You want me to cook them a little more? It's just not done enough. Not done enough? They're also coming back. Said these are undercooked and a little chewy. Undercooked? Yeah. All right. It's raw on the inside. Look at that. That's completely raw. This is raw. Yep. Yeah. Is this normal? Yes. It happened a lot of times. It should have happened, but it happened a lot of times. The kitchen have no system. There's no one person in charge in the kitchen. It's supposed to be Mike. With dishes coming back, Michael jumps back into the kitchen. This came back, Michael? What was this? I don't know what that is. But so does Jerry. And both brothers are trying to take control of the kitchen. Michael, yeah? Take this off the window right now. I don't know what you're pointing at, Jerry. You're driving me nuts. I won't let my brother dictate what I do or how I run my business. Give me those crab legs those right crab now. Those crab legs have to be finished Michael, cooking. do what you're doing. Done cooking, you come do out. what you're doing. I am doing what I'm doing. I'm telling you about them snow crabs. Michael. Can anyone work together here? I mean, this is absolutely fucking hideous. King crab legs are already out. No, this no. is just snow. No, there's no king crab legs out. My god. If I would have known it was going to take this long, I would have definitely had something before we left. Hopefully, it's worth the wait. You get involved. You, you know, you confuse me. See? Give me. The only thing I take is the yellow thing. You listen, cannot talk listen to, to me. Listen, listen to me. Give me a pork chop. Meet him. Mike was in the middle. He tried to do everything. And you know, he got conf he confuses a lot of people. I need an order of Spanish potatoes and rice. And I want together or separate? It doesn't matter. I don't Tell care. Tell me. Separate. Stop yelling. I'll knock you out right here. You hear me? We need to get organized big time. Everyone's arguing with each other. And it's no. like, no teamwork anywhere. No. I want the food. I'm going to go home in a minute. OK, me too. I got to go home too. OK, give me those Listen lobsters. Listen to me. Give me those lobsters. Those people are waiting. Okay. They're right here. What do you want? them up your ass I'll in a minute? Give them to me. I'll take them out. Mike, keep it together. Want, listen, give me that fucking food. I want to send out. I want to send right. out the fucking food out. Let's come here with give me. me. Come here with me. Come I here. want that fucking food out. Leave me a fucking room. Leave me alone. Yeah. Just leave me alone. Give me the food that I, I want. The customers are waiting for the food. Everything you can. Uh, we're OK. We're OK. Jeez. We're OK. Come on, I understand you're excited right now. You're leave me alone, man. Now talk to me later. Get out. Mike, okay. get out. It's two hours into dinner service. That's completely raw. With dishes being returned and very little food leaving the kitchen. Give me the food that I, I want. The customers are waiting for the food. There's now chaos at Spanish Pavilion. I want the fucking food out. Leave me a fucking room. Leave me alone. Yeah. And it's all too much for Michael. Hey, get out of here. Michael, Mike. Okay, get, out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Michael. get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Stop it. Get out of here. Michael, what's the matter with you? Stop, 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 stop him. Stop it, out, Michael, stop it. Ah, oh, no way. You're jumping around. Give me the food. Give me the relax. Michael, Michael. Okay, you, okay, 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 okay. You know Michael, come here. You gotta listen to that. Relax, relax, relax. 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 Okay, Alex, Just stop. Okay. Stop. And Michael, you're a fucking owner. Just fool. Big deep breath. What are you doing? Stop what are you doing to that man? It's okay, here to help Michael. you. I know you. What, what the fuck it. are you doing? 
Michael should never touch somebody. No, stop it. Michael had no right to do that. Michael should not do that. That's where my brother sometimes doesn't get it. Let's get back in normal here. Go take a breather. Is that normal? My brother's yeah. react? Yeah. Um, he can get, he can flip like this sometimes, yeah. He can't work like that. Jumping around like a maniac. I, I calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, Michael, calm down, calm Michael, down, calm Michael, down. you calm down now and I'm stop making down, a big man. show out of this. I'm not, Mom, stop it. I was the one that made the show out of this. Again, it's stop my fault. Stop it, Stop it, it's my Michael. fault, Mom. Michael, Again, it's my fault. Stop it. Yeah. I lost my temper. In the heat of the moment, it happens, but you gotta calm down, regroup, and just breathe. With Michael cooling off outside, the kitchen manages to pull it together. Five's ready. Take it out. Sending out the last orders of the night. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. OK. Uh, what a day. I've never, ever seen such a disorganized, fragmented service ever. Disaster. Confusion in the kitchen, chaos in the dining room. Lots of confusion. Michael, I thought you were supposed to be running the kitchen. I don't think you realize how bad tonight was. I'll see you in the morning. After a night in which 21 dishes came back during dinner service. That's completely raw. Oh my God, it was raw. Chef Ramsay comes in early to do a little investigating. What is in there? They're not drumsticks. They're crab sticks. Just dumped in here on top of another bag oh, of Alaskan crab. No dates, no labels. How on earth are you supposed to run a business when you've got no idea what's in the freezers? What is down here? My god, it gets worse. Look at it. It's absolutely jam-packed. Chicken after chicken after chicken. My big worry is how much chicken does this restaurant really need? I mean, there's just bags of it. And not only that, but the smell is horrific. Oh, my God. Look at these fillets. I've seen less packs at an army base. It's over 50 packs of meat. And whoever's buying this needs to be fired. Now, what worries me about this is there's one more fridge upstairs. That fucking pigeon. Oh my god. It's never ending. Just when I think I've seen enough, there's more. Look, dead. Decomposed, soft, dead. Oh, that's the snails. Oof, how? What is that in there? That is a raw dead lobster. That is disgusting. It's two hours into Chef Ramsay's inspection. Michael, Balbina, and Jerry arrive unaware of what Chef Ramsay is doing and what he has uncovered. Morning. Morning, Chef. Good morning, Chef. I just need you for two minutes. Who in the hell buys produce here? Who, who's responsible for that? I am. You are. Fucking pigeon. What I'm trying to look at are the profits, the purchasing, the thousands of dollars waste. These here. They came in yesterday. That's dead. Let's have a little look around here. Jerry, please. And you wonder why I don't like your sauce. That is a dead lobster. And the freshest thing in this kitchen is that pigeon flying around. And he's lucky he's still alive. I thought that the kitchen was in somewhat disarray. Did I think it was that bad? No. I'd love to turn around and say, that's it. Have you seen what's downstairs in the fridge? Where do I start with this? Look at all this fucking meat here. I wanted to make sure I was ready. For You're whatever ready for what? Way. Whatever. Help me, Michael. Whatever ready for what? My way. Whatever, whatever came your way. I don't know what to expect. You're burning money you haven't got. Why is this like this? 
And, and what happened, Michael? Somebody's not doing their job in, in the kitchen. There's expensive because produce this, here. This is ridiculous. Yeah, my fault. I, and my fault on our refrigerator. I'm disappointed that so much was ordered in advance. There's no excuse for that. Spend some time together. I've got to wash my fucking hands before I get diagnosed with fucking staphylococci. You need to concentrate. You know what? Right maybe way. I'm overwhelmed, Mom. Maybe I'm trying to do everything and I can't. Maybe the office, the ordering. What's the most important? I, I got to iron that out, Mom. This no? is the most important. And I try my hardest. I don't know what to tell you about, about all this meat and everything here. I'm out of here right now. And it's overwhelming. I just don't have the answers. Belmina. This is yeah. so sad, you know that? What would your father say if he walked in here and saw that? No, my father, of course, would be upset. What I saw down there today, it's not the Spanish pavilion. No. It's not what I was brought into. The quality of the food meant a lot to my father. It's upsetting, and I would hope things wouldn't get to the extreme that I have to close the doors. I don't know right now what's going through his mind, but his concentration right now is totally off. He's all over the place. It shows. Jerry has to put in a little more, too. And when he's here, he should concentrate on the restaurant. Forget all your politics. Jerry needs Michael. Michael needs Jerry. They now have to roll up their sleeves, work together, but more importantly, they have got to set the differences aside as brothers and stop being so stubborn, because that's what they are, and the business is fragmented. Today, Chef Ramsay is determined to move the Spanish pavilion in the right direction, and he knows one step is getting Michael back to where he belongs. I want you to think of something that you want to cook. In the kitchen, cooking. Something that go on tonight as a special. Yes, yeah, Chef. Right out of college, I had a lot of passion. I had a lot of creativity. I would come up with dishes a little easier. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to come up with something that's going to impress the chef. Right, first of all, I want to do a chicken and garlic. Yeah, a modern version. I want you to work with me at the same time. I started off with olive oil. I started off with butter, it's going to burn. I'm excited about having the opportunity to learn from one of the top five most famous chefs in the world. You got that nice saute sear on the chicken. From there, or you put it over the top, and then just scoop up a touch of that sauce. Modern Spanish cuisine. What do you think that you want to cook? My grandfather's really well known for some octopus. OK. And I want to make some octopus with nice. you. Nice. Go for it. I'm nervous right now. I hope this dish comes out right through the years. I've lost some of my passion for this kitchen. So far, it looks good. I know that Chef Ramsay can help me by bringing my passion back, and I'm looking forward to it. This is the octopus. OK, and um, roast potatoes. Yes. Yeah, good, it's nice. Yeah, I like it. Presentation as well, I like it. <laughs> and tonight, want you this side of the line, right? Yeah? Yes, yeah, Chef. Chef Ramsay's chicken and garlic dish and Michael's octopus special are going on tonight's menu. The chicken dish is a modern version of a garlic chicken. But after serving the same old menu... Read the special back to me. Uh, I'm sorry. 20-year veteran Joe is having a hard time with the change. Chicken a chef on the bone with the garlic. Chicken chef on the bone. Come on, you can do it, Joe. Yeah, but you're making me nervous now. I'm, uh... I'm making you nervous? Yes, sir. <laughs> Just put your head in there for two minutes. Cool it down. Head in there. That's it. There you go. Stay there for two minutes. It feels so nice. Right. Oh. Hi, how are you? To follow me, please. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay, guys, let's go, yeah? Chef Ramsay knows the success of this restaurant depends on Jerry and Michael working together. Michael. Yes, sir. I want to look at you, yeah? And I want this level of communication much better than we had last night. So tonight, both brothers are assigned to do what they do best. Michael cooking behind the line. All right, listen, try to take care of this area. And Jerry running the pass. Michael, listen at me. Look at me one, no, look at me one minute. If the shit hits the fan, I want you to listen to me. Yes, sir. No, I mean yes, it. Yes, sir. OK. I got to admit, I'm a little nervous right now. I don't know what to expect. I'm afraid of failure. I might fuck up, but just remind me. We can handle this, all right? We're going to see. The chicken today is the chicken uh, our chef. 
a little uh, cold wine called Jerez from Spain, cherry, cherry wine, okay? A little lemon juice and a little touch of butter. There goes the first ticket, right? Let me have a chicken special, Mike. First order comes in, there's a special on, right? It's good, it's good. It's like perfect, bro, but it scares me. I just don't trust. You can see it in his eyes, he's a little nervous. So hopefully we'll get it for the night. Okay, I'll take that chicken and garlic out. First one of the night. Go, table six. Despite Michael's lack of confidence. I'm not gonna be able to do it. The specials are not only leaving the kitchen. Oh, wow. The customers. This is really good. Are thrilled with what they are receiving. Delicious. I like it. Wow. With the dining room now full and orders pouring into the kitchen. I don't know what's going on. Michael, not used to being on the line, is starting to buckle under the pressure. All right, give me table three or six. We got to get this food out. There's no rush. Well, there's a little bit of a pressing now. We'll let him wait. Well, it's been taking an awful long time. People on the way. Uh, Joe. Is it me or food's taking a long time to come yeah, out? Yes. That's the too slow. Those are way too slow. Oh. Tables are going to get up and leave in 10 seconds. I need table 13. It's about four, three minutes away. Don't keep asking. If we have all these tables waiting for food and Michael's overwhelmed with his kitchen duties, then I need him to focus. Ah! Just put it on the fucking plate right now. Shut up! Come on, guys. As tensions escalate in the kitchen, very little food is making its way out to the dining room. They need the time. And one customer who was lucky enough to receive food. The chicken's dry and mushy. Isn't exactly happy. Ever had chip. I didn't like it. Cherry. It's not normal. It's not fucking normal. That one chicken, it just didn't smell right. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Jerry. Yeah. Two steps. Michael. Yes, chef. Urgently. Quickly. Smell. It's yeah. gone. No, it, smell it. Don't Not just say enough. fucking yeah. It's gone. You can't serve that shit tonight. I felt utterly embarrassed and humiliated. But at this point, we're just going to shut it down. Oh, stop. Stop. It's an hour and a half into dinner service. Ah! And while Jerry and Michael continue to clash in the kitchen. Just put it on the fucking plate right now. Shut up! Chef Ramsay discovers something disturbing. Oh, no. Spoiled chicken in the Spanish pavilion. You can't serve that shit tonight. Oh, no. Ow. Have you got chicken in the fryer? Did yeah. you pass that chicken? Hey. I got don't, one. Don't here. serve it. Don't, don't serve it. Fucking dare. Now go get me a chicken. Let's cut an order real quick, fresh, right now. Michael, how many fresh chickens are downstairs? A case and a half. A case and a half downstairs in the fucking fridge, and he's serving you that sticky shit. You're cooking it, and it's off. You know, I don't know why that chicken got there. We got fresh chickens downstairs. You know what? We got to use that fresh chicken then. But when you're in the weeds. You have to focus. All right, we have the chicken and garlic. They're using the one thank from downstairs. Thank you, thank you. If you're going to keep the customers waiting, you've got to make sure it's right. I'm not going to let it crumble. Go get it. We got to get this food out. Give me that chicken and garlic. Let's go. Jerry, you'll get the chicken and garlic when it's done, please. Out, out. Give me table two. Fuck this. Give me table two. That's it. With Jerry clearly stepping up as the leader. Take this to table two. The evening is salvaged, and food is leaving the kitchen once again. Everything's coming out right now. At the end of the day, getting that food out is like a relief. Thank you. You might have had to wait like an hour, but we'll get it down eventually. Honestly, tonight was better. Everybody liked the specials, but let's not get too excited about tonight because the quality control has to be much better. You're absolutely right. And Michael, your cooks are passing you stinking rancid chicken, but you didn't spot it. Jerry, I thought your performance tonight was bloody good. Thank you, Chef. Tonight was better. Hopefully, we're headed in the right direction. Good night. With the Spanish pavilion at least headed in the right direction, Chef Ramsay and his team work overnight to give the Spanish pavilion a modern makeover. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chef. Good to see you all. Let's be honest, not much has changed over the last 30 years, right? Correct. 
Today is the beginning of a new era. And through that door is your future. Are you ready to see it? Yeah. 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 Michael, are you ready? One, two, three. Come on in. Look at this. Oh, Beautiful. my God. Nice. That's what I'm talking oh. about. Oh. Oh. Hey. Warm, inviting atmosphere. We removed the stained glass to give it a modern feel. Hey, unreal. And then down here, we've increased the seating. So we have a lovely banquet. Tablecloths have gone. Gone! All the tables have been replaced. Good oh, yeah. for that. This is walnut. It's modern and it's warm. On the tabletops, we have the most amazing china. Oh, baby. Provided by Tabletops Unlimited. Awesome. How exciting is that? I love it, baby. It's amazing. I feel like I'm in another restaurant. I couldn't believe the openness of the dining room. Glad to see the tablecloths gone, the new plates, the, the Spanish look. I felt like I was in Spain. It's awesome. Nice. Following the much needed redesign, Chef Ramsay now turns his attention to attracting new customers. When your grandfather opened his restaurant there, he did not face the competition that you now face. I really do mean competition. Look oh. at that. 2010, 40 Spanish restaurants within a two mile radius of your front door. Having studied in the neighborhood, all these restaurants are serving the same bloody food. You have an opportunity now to stand out. Are you ready to see your dishes? Oh, yes. Come with me. Let's go. Please, come through. Small tapas is the taste of Spain. Authentic, delicious, and homemade. You have to push the tapas. This is what turns this restaurant around. A roasted lamb, Spanish meatball, and a fresh tomato sauce. Bacon-wrapped dates, yes. Sautéed prawns with garlic, a little bit of shaved fennel. Olives, manchego cheese, yeah. We're going for flavor, simplicity, and we're going for Spain. I love the new menu. To be different is incredible. That is the key to make our restaurant stand out. But just as important, here are your new waiters. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Look at these guys, come in. Ah, like black. black. I like Amazing. It. They now no longer look like undertakers. You love it. That's what I you love it. Oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that looks great, baby. Look at this, look. Oh, I look good. <laughs> I love this guy. OK, tonight is your night. There's nothing that you cannot do here. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Chef, if an order comes in, who's touching that ticket? Who do you think? Jerry? That's right. He's expedited. And I'm going to give it right there. Absolutely definite. Okay. But Jerry, he's going to lose the ticket, I'm afraid. He will not lose it. Why are you talking so negatively? Oh, no. I'm trying to foresee a I possible I don't foresee. Problem. Just focus. You're right. Yeah? Yes. You're thinking too hard. It must hurt. Right now, I have to trust my brother, and I don't know if I could do that. I'm worried that the whole thing could fall apart. With over 40 Spanish restaurants in two square miles... This is our new menu. Chef Ramsay's menu overhaul will now have the Spanish pavilion standing out. The croquetas is great. Excellent. And then we'll do um, paella. But will the brothers be able to pull it off? Here we go, first order coming in. One meatball, one manchego croquettes, and the clams with chorizo. Come on, guys, this first order, we got to do it right. Let's go. Table two, appetizers, go. I'm sending you a potatoes, bravos, one date, table 11. OK, looks wonderful, brother. All right, let's go, this is gone, let's go. After that's a rack of lamb meeting. How is it? Fantastic. Yummy. Very How good. is it? It's good. Yeah? Yeah. I like it. The sauce is so spicy and tasty. Love it. I think they love those hot of plates. Sure, it's, and it's I think a great that way. It's a great idea great that you came up with. Extra revenue. I've had them in Spain, but these are much better. And we are Tobin party of 12. As the dining room fills up, another order coming in. Orders continue to pour in, and it's time for the kitchen to face its first big test. Send me that table six. Then. Table six, didn't we send now? That went out. Six went oh, out. No, Jerry. it didn't. Six went out, Jerry. Or maybe not. Here no, it, it did. No, okay, it did. No, it did. All right? Two meatballs. No, Michael, table six doesn't have any meatballs. Michael, let Jerry do his job. I think Michael is overwhelmed, and he doesn't focus. And that's what we have to deal with almost every day with Michael. That's it. Go. 17. Jerry, whoa, whoa. You got the croquettes, Jerry? He left without him. For who, Michael? For the That's... water is one muscles. No. No, you're right, you're right, you're right. 
Get organised, buddy. Yeah. Like a fucking rabbit in a headlight. Look at him. Let's go. Michael's confusion in the kitchen turns the dining room when it was taking them so long. into a waiting room. Michael, listen to me. Michael, you know, listen. And Jerry's attempt to restore the communication. I need, listen to me, listen to me. Falls on deaf ears. I need a shrimp right now, so. Table five. Sir, did seven get their appetizers? Table five. No, table seven did not. But before table seven, I need table five. It's not going to cook any quicker than where you asked for, right. brother. Right, do you, you, hey, step up to the mark a little bit, OK? I'm working with your team. We all know Michael feels that he has to be in control at all times. Jerry, it's my line. So the reality is, if the person on the other side of the line is expediting the food, that person is the orchestra leader. He's got to listen to that person no matter what. And right now, I'm that person. Michael, you have table seven over there, please? Didn't that go well? No. Give me three skirt states over there right away. Right here, three, one, two, three. Michael, support. Uh... It's relaunch night at the Spanish Pavilion. And while the restaurant feels new, the mounting pressure has brought out the old Michael. Uh... And the restaurant is teetering on disaster. I need table five. Didn't that go well? No. Give me three skirt steaks over there right away. Right here, three, one, two, three. Michael, come here. Two seconds. You have to keep it together. He's your brother. You can't do that in front of the fucking team. You've got to show him some fucking respect. Yes, it's hard, but you've got to back off. He's up to his eyeballs in the fucking weeds, and you're laying into him. Fucking slow down. It's your brother, and it's your business and his business. Got it? Yes, Chef. Come on. Yes, Chef. Chef Rams is 100% right. I cannot argue with my brother. I overdid it, man. I made a mistake, and it won't happen again. I'm going to learn, and it's going to be better. Right, regroup and organize after that. Jerry, what would you like? I need those clams, and I need the paella marinera for two, and then after that's a rack of lamb meeting. In my hand, sir. That's it right there, right? OK. Ooh, hot. That's very hot. OK, gambas. Let's do the bar. I need an order of gambas. It's coming right now. That's what I need. With Michael and Jerry finally working together. I need patatas bravas. Be right out. Patatas bravas be right out. The two brothers complete dinner service. Yippa! On a high. So good. Delicious. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> your dessert. Very good. All right. OK. okay. This is good. Best Spanish restaurant in this area. Tonight confirmed that the Spanish Pavilion is back on the map and ready to compete. But tomorrow, it starts all over again. Tonight wasn't perfect, but we did make an amazing transformation. Thank you. See ya. It was wonderful to uh, meet you. Likewise. Likewise, Thank likewise. You. Just to hear the chef say, you guys can do it, really got to my sons. You two, 30 seconds in the bath, please, together. For them to realize, if you work together and you concentrate, you got a good business here. You have an amazing opportunity now to really turn this restaurant around, but it requires both of you. Jerry, I thought you were just some politician. You are a genuine leader. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Great potential. Michael, a big heart, but you've got to focus behind that line. If you stay focused, and master those dishes, you'll get there. I promise you, I will. I promise you. Chef Ramsey came here, and I had the intentions that he was going to help put this place back on track. I think he did more than what I expected. I think he ignited my passion in the kitchen again, put me closer with my brother. This is what we needed. And look after each other. Good night. When I first arrived here, I was greeted by a dead lobster and a restaurant stuck in the 70s. And in just a matter of days, the Spanish pavilion has been transformed. But this restaurant will only succeed if those two brothers find a way to stay united and work together. Big brother, little brother. In the weeks that followed, 
Okay, take this to the table too. Give me those clips. Jerry embraced his role as expediter. Give me the free harvest. And is now devoting more time to the restaurant. And I need a filet mignon medium well. You have that working, right? Jerry, medium well I was waiting on. Michael is staying in the kitchen. Let's go, there you go, there you go, there you go. And cooking full time. And the new menu is being well received by the customers. The menu looks awesome. Yeah. More importantly, these brothers are united and carrying on the successful legacy left to them by their grandfather. Next. Carlstadt, New Jersey. A small industrial town buried in the shadow of Meadowland Stadium. Only a mile away sits the Grasshopper also, a family-owned Irish pub and restaurant. Hi, how are you, gals? How you doing, all right? Good. 17 years ago, newlyweds Mitch and Maureen Sandler purchased the restaurant with Maureen's father, a successful restaurateur with 40 years of experience in the business. We were excited, because you have dreams, and you say, OK, let's go for it. So that's what we did. Ready to rock and roll, right? Yeah, let's go. This is going to be good. It took off. We were booming. Enjoy your meal. People were coming in left and right. All right, this way, please. And as the years rolled by, things started to change in the business. Obviously, it's dead tonight. Just go home, OK? As far as why the restaurant is failing, I don't know. What time is they coming in tomorrow? I don't know the schedule. This place is a nightmare because Mitch. Where's that going? I have no idea yet. This supervision is not what it should be. Mitch, you got to come out here. Yeah. Mitch is responsible for the kitchen. What am I doing in here? He's in this restaurant a ridiculous amount of hours, and a majority of those hours are not productive. Hey, uh, where's the toilet plunger? Can I get a bar mop, please? How are you? Good. There's daily operations of the restaurant that he absolutely should not be involved in. Maybe he could commit more of his time to oversee stuff that is, you know, uh, in the kitchen. All the other stuff has to be done that you're not taking care of. You're doing all that other stuff. Communication between Mitchell and his staff is non-existent. Hey, uh, how long does it take to make rice? The guys don't probably think it's a problem. I'm surprised they didn't make any rice. But it's recording, OK? Yes, it's recording. And because of that, the food at the Grasshopper just looks awful. They didn't like the, They didn't say there was a lot of flavor in it. It is so dry. He doesn't like this. That's perfect, that steak. It was rare. Mitch won't take no responsibility of uh, quality control. Mitch, you call this soup? Get rid of this shit. My father-in-law blames me for everything. So I'm the scapegoat. There's nobody here. It's horrible. We need some people. If we continue this way, we're not going to make it. I feel like my life is falling apart. It's pretty tough. Every day I think about the restaurant. It's all on my shoulders, and every day it eats at me. We cannot afford this. Well, that's why we need some help here. If Chef Ramsey can't help me, I don't know where else to turn. Uh, this is the last resort. Ramsey, I'm Maureen Sandler. Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. Okay, this is my dad, Eddie. Eddie Nick Patrick, Bonucci. Chef Ramsey, welcome. I thought you were a small little book. No, no, no. This is my husband. Hi, Mitch. Chef. How are you? Mitch. Pleasure to meet you. We're co-owners. So the three of you are running the business Correct. Yeah, together. Yes. Correct. Wow. I should really stand between these two guys because that's usually the case. Oh, really? Well, why do you say that? We butt heads occasionally. Occasionally. Are you kidding? We almost kill each other. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You're already refereeing these two. I mean, who does what? I'm the one that oversees the kitchen. OK, so I'd like to get up to speed okay. with you individually and have a quick chat. Come on this way. I'm the one that takes care of the bills, and it's getting tougher and tougher. So we need Chef Ramsay's help. The fact that you stood in the middle of those two guys, is it really that bad, or...? <sighs> Business has changed drastically. And my father has to blame somebody, and he blames my husband. Where does your allegiance lie? With my husband, you know? I support him. How much does it cost to build this? Three million to get it going. That's crazy. What do you think is wrong with the business? Mitch is one of the biggest problems due 
regret now, 16 years later, giving him part of the business? Yes, I do. Tell me the biggest issue inside Grasshopper. My father-in-law blames me for everything. But is he right or is he wrong? Could be right, could be wrong. Who's running it? I guess I am, right? Let's talk about the food. Um, people seem to like it. Lovely. I can't wait to taste that. Enjoy. Our traditional Irish food's good here. I think you'll like the food, I hope. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. And first Ramsey. name is? Ramsey. Annette. Annette, nice to see you, darling. Very nice to meet you. And you are? The floor manager here. Floor I'm manager. Also. How long have you been here? I've worked in this one for six eight years. So you've been here from day one? Day one. What's wrong with the restaurant? Um, start to the top. Management or lack of. Very frustrating. Well, I love your uh, honesty. On a scale of one to ten, what would you rate the food? Mm. You're three. Jesus. The cooks are winging it. I don't know. What is that? I don't think care goes into every dish that they're making. Okay, have you decided or? Let's go for the uh, French onion soup. Okay. Shepherd's pie. And I'll go for fisherman's platter. Fantastic. Hungry, hey? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, dying to get my okay. head around. What's going on? All right, what's he having? First things first, we'd like a French onion soup. Thank you. Unbelievable. Lamps from another era. These bonquettes. They look like my grandmother's luggage. Unbelievable. Let me taste this. This soup, it tastes like tar. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Do you want a... Yes. OK. Mitch is serving the food, which I told him is completely wrong. But unfortunately, he doesn't know what he's doing in here. OK, enjoy. Thank you. Just mm. colour. <sighs> Jesus. It's like somebody's dropped sliced onions into boiling dish water. Dreadful. How's the French onion? Yeah, off to a bad start, unfortunately. It's like someone's pissed in my soup. Well, that's not good. We'll take this away. That was dreadful. All right, um, guys, the French onion, he said it's like piss. Flavor, he said it was not good. I told you that onion soup wasn't right. Uh, we know, I know. Well, how are you going to get your kids to these guys to do that, right? Uh, I don't know. I'll find out. The kitchen staff will do what they want to do and do as little as possible. Mitch should grab the bull by the horns and be in command. All right, shepherd's pie, here we go. Thank you, Gabriel. He makes a good shepherd's pie. All right, chef. Thank you. Shepherd's pie. Wow, that's a very bizarre looking shepherd's pie. Someone put gravy on top of my crispy mash? Yes. That is a shocker. Like someone's snot all over my mash. Yeah. And that gravy is made from? Beef. Beef stock on a shepherd's yes. pie. And shepherd's pie is made out of? This one is actually beef. So it's a cottage so. pie, not a shepherd's pie, because shepherd stands for the? Sheep. Sheep. I'll be back to check on you. Cold, congealed gravy. It's like glue. So how are we doing? Mm, taste that. For me. Ouch. Yeah. It's just gross. And it's not hot either. That's partly the reason why they're not coming back. It's just watery. Damn. There was two strikes right away. And I was fairly confident that he would like one of them, at least. You right? Fine. Guess good. Damn. There's a, uh, there's a lot of pain on Mitch's face. Batting zero. Yeah. The big uh, whip. See, he doesn't know what he's doing. Mitch is fucking up everything here. All right, Chef, this is our broiled fisherman's platter. OK. Flounder, scallops and shrimp. Thank you. Fuck it up. My God. Oh, boy. That's gross. Christ. No good, Chef? Soft, bland, rubbery. I didn't realise it could be this bad. Thank you. OK. Mitch can be blind, you know, I'm not kidding you. He's fucking yelling at you. All you have to do is do what I told you. Yeah. Well, I'm not even going there, Dad. Oh, no, this was not good. This uh, was, this we was saved the worst. This the was worst the worst of the worst. Till right? the end. No, you're here 16 years, so you think your food is decent? 
to hear otherwise, it's kind of shocking. I, can, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. I didn't realize it could be this bad. Thoroughly disgusted with lunch. Fucking hell, that's gross. Chef Ramsay wants to meet the chefs responsible for this supposed authentic Irish cuisine. Come around this side, please. So who's the chef? Mario. How long have you been here, sir? I would say from uh, 1997. Did you taste any of the food that came back? Yes, I did. You did? What was your thoughts? I would say it was OK. You thought it was OK? Obviously, because you're smiling. I'm embarrassed. You're from Ireland. Yes. What I had there today had nothing to do with Ireland. Shepherd's pie? Well, fuck me, that wasn't shepherd's pie. If you went to Dublin and you served shepherd's pie like that, they would shoot you. The food is embarrassing. Bland, cooked dreadfully. It has no flavor. Where's the pot of scallops? Where'd you keep those? Right there. Show it to me, please. Is that what you use out of mine? So that's what you cook my scallops from, yeah? Are they frozen? No, they're not frozen now. They're frozen. They were frozen, but they're yep. not frozen now. Yep. You've got no chance of cooking that. Decent. Oh, my gosh. I was dying. I was mortified. It's not hidden. It wasn't a secret. You just have to go in and open a fridge door. What's that in there? I don't think anybody walked into the refrigerator or the walk-in box or inspected it all. Frozen. Everything's frozen. That's what he's getting. Nothing's fresh. Hold on, hold on. Maureen, come over. Mitch, come over, please. What is that? How old are they? They're not that old. That's two days old. That's a funny two days. How are you going to recook them? Help me. What are we going to do? You refry it. So it's fried twice. I want to throw up. There's not enough liquor in that bar to get them inebriated enough to even attempt to eat that. Is there any control in here, guys? Oh, what is that? Mozzarella sticks. And can you see that there? Blood. Blood from where? From the meat. Blood from the meat on the mozzarella sticks. Come on, guys. Thank God I didn't have the fucking mozzarella sticks. It looked like a blood transfusion going on down there. Mitch, when was the last time you went through the fridge? Uh... Talk to me, please. I have not gone through this fridge. Chef. I left it up to my staff. Right. I knew I had a problem with Mitch as far as that supervision was involved, but I didn't think it was as bad, you know? You've got raw meat here, cooked meat, salami, blood in there. Fuck it. Come on, please. Don't do this to yourself, let alone the customers. Rule number one. When learning to cook, you cannot store raw meat and cooked meat on the same fucking shelf in the same fucking fridge. The whole fucking thing has got a cross-contamination. Chief, give me something. It's like a supervision in here. Where's the rest of the fridge? Okay, this way. That's what I need to see. There. Tender. Chicken tenders. Why is it all bubbly and slimy? There's a chicken come like that. The chicken comes like that. Look how slimy it is. Look how slimy it is. Look at it. Shit. My God, it's horrific. It's totally embarrassing. What is this? How can you serve that? It's like it's been left out for days and. It's been attacked by cats. This is where your money's going. Irrespective of where the customers aren't coming from, but just from the base. Yeah, absolute waste. I know, because I pay the bills. Let me just tell you now, I would never, never have put a spoon of anything in my mouth if I knew this was taking place. It's shocking to see just the extent of cross-contamination. There's no one checking. I'm sorry, Chief. You may be the Chief, but I swear to God, there's one thing the grasshopper hasn't got is a leader. We should all be ashamed of ourselves. At this point in time, I'd like to shut the doors and just say, you know what, bring it all. Someone's got to help me here a little bit. I cannot 
help a situation who are not willing to help themselves. And you don't need me to come in here and turn your fridge upside down. Mitch, if you're the one with the hands-on role in this business and you're supporting him and you're the, the, the mentoring figure, we're screwed. Do you have people coming tonight? What are, we, what are we gonna do? I can guarantee you one thing. I am not serving food tonight with that shit in there. No way. What's that in there? After a horrifying inspection in the kitchen. The whole thing has got a cross-contamination. Chef Ramsay was left with no choice. I am not serving that shit in there. No way. I'm beyond, beyond embarrassed about this situation. Shutting down our dinner service, it's a nightmare. We cannot afford this. And OK, you want to open? Fine, of course I want business in here. But open with what? Take one good look at yourselves and fucking think. I need some air, guys. Air and a stomach pump. We have never closed uh, for dinner, ever. I mean, we've had 18 inches of snow outside and we've opened. Mitch, there has to be leadership in the kitchen. What are you going to do tonight? I don't know what's to say. Well, get in there and tell them to clean that stuff off. And guess what they're throwing out? They're throwing dollars out. And guess who's paying for it? We are. We're paying for it. What just happened here tonight was um, kind of a disaster. Mitch knows that this whole thing right now, tonight, is his responsibility. We can't serve any food the way it is. The dinner is canceled. In shock, I'm drained emotionally. I hope this does not happen ever again. Otherwise, we won't be here. Mitch, that's focus. That's where it should have been. This is where you don't listen to me. Oh, okay. Why are you starting to fight I'm with just, me now? Um, all right? I'm just saying, Mitch. All right, just... oh, boy, that's where my focus is. But it takes a, an awakening to learn, all right? Bad news, folks. Sorry we're not open tonight. There wasn't enough of supervision in there, and I guess the shit has hit the fan today. I'm sorry about it. Aww. Sorry about that. Definitely I'm embarrassed. As Chief returns from telling customers the restaurant is closed, inside, a leader has emerged to supervise the cleaning of the kitchen. Mitch, all of this has to be thrown out. But it's not Mitch. Because the blood was coming down, throw it out, get rid of it. It's Marine. Right? That has to go. It's very upsetting. The food that's going into that garbage is our profits. Throw out. Gone. And here we are in a situation where we're not making profits. Mitch, this has to be thrown out. This has to go. All right, Maureen, all right, all right, all right. All right, right. Everything was thrown away, disposed of. Scrubbed, washed, cleaned, and uh, we'll start again. We're cleaning. We're closed. Everything's got to be clean. After an eye-opening first day, Chef Ramsay realizes that it's not just the restaurant that is on the line, but Mitch and Marine's marriage as well. Morning. Hi, Chef. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. It's a tough day yesterday. Yeah, I'll say. Well, this is my home. Go, who's that? It's Mitch. Seriously? Seriously. When was that taken? 13 years ago. Wow. Mitch and I, back in the day, we were best of friends. And through the years now, he's not the same person he used to be. And that's the hard thing. When you opened that restaurant, you got married at the same time. Right. The guy I'm seeing today. You saw that picture. That's not the same person. You haven't got your breathing space. Mitch has been suffocated. And more importantly, the man's getting destroyed on a daily basis. I complain to my father. When he does, like, the busting chops and, like, breaking him down, I'm like, how dare you? So there is me in the between, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's fragmented to where there's nothing constructive taking place. But in Mitch, I think there's a broken man there. He's spent. He works his ass off. And what does he get? And what's his payoff? <laughs> 16 years in that business. And it's not right that we're in this situation. And it's our doing, but we have to make a decision on which way to go. The turnaround's gonna start today. We need to start getting Mitch back. Okay. And help him ascertain some form of pride back in his work. Honestly, the turnaround will be huge. But I can't do that without you. I'm ready, man. As far as the business is concerned and what is at stake, it's our family life. I'll see you back at the restaurant. He wants the end of the day. This place can't control us. It's time for us to control it. 
So whatever it takes. Now convinced that Marine will give Mitch the support he desperately needs, Chef Ramsay heads back to the Grasshopper to see if the restaurant is clean enough to open for dinner. Guys, have a, have a look. I hope Chef Ramsay will uh, see a big change in the way we're running this kitchen today. It's better than yesterday, yeah. All right, guys, get set up for service tonight. I want this set up completely, OK? He learned from uh, what went on yesterday and, and hope we get through it OK today. To be the leader. I don't even know if I can, uh, how I'm going to handle this tonight. Don't beat yourself up all the time. Don't stop well, beating yourself up. I'm not beating myself up, that's right. Enough. Mitch is gun ho. He'll he'll give it a whirl. But he has to learn to be a better communicator and um, work together as a team, or else we're not gonna make it. I won't pull through this. Oh, my God. While Maureen tried to energize Mitch, Chef Ramsay knows that years of disappointing his wife and his father-in-law. Mitch, you got two seconds? Yes, sir. Uh, take me to the office, please. Has resulted in a complete loss of confidence for Mitch. Are you okay? Am I okay? Yeah. 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 OK, tonight, I want you to really seriously, yeah, make it work. You've yeah. got to get this right. Run it. Let them hear your voice. You wear your heart on your sleeve, you know that. I know, I get emotional, you know? I can and, see that. I can and, see uh, that. I can see that. But relax. And, uh, you can do this. The minute you find that voice, yeah. they'll all back off. Yeah. Can you do it? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, thank on. you. Thanks for let's coming. Let's go. After hopefully energizing Mitch, Chef Ramsay turns his attention to the menu. OK, Mario, let's go. Adding two appropriate specials, authentic Irish shepherd's pie and fish and chips. OK, colour the vegetables nice and fine. So as it starts to cook, it disintegrates in the mince. Salt, please. I know you don't use it. Salt, salt, salt. No, no. Thank you. Season. OK, from there. Mashed potatoes made with cheese. It, it seasons it. Come on, guys. I want you to taste it. The shepherd's pie was awesome. I was excited about that. I enjoyed it. My staff enjoyed it. I hope the customers will, too. OK, the fish, lightly seasoned flour. And you don't want to just drop it in, right? No. Guys, it's a piece of fish. Tell me, it's not a dishcloth. Crisp batter. So you season it as it cools down. Chief, what do you think? Oh, that's it. We should do this a long time ago. Two specials. We roll with them. Because I'm with you, you're expediting okay. big time. I don't know if I'm going to be the leader, but I'm going to try. I'm not confident. I just want to crawl into a fucking hole. After refusing to open on night one, I am not serving that shit in there. Chef Ramsay strengthens the menu with his version of a shepherd's pie and fish and chips. Oh, that's it. Now he is hoping to get some encouraging signs as he watches Mitch and his staff during a dinner service. OK. Um, yeah, I've been to work with Bayore, right? Excuse me? I've been to work with Bayore. I haven't got a clue what you say. Is that Spanish, uh, Scottish, or Irish? What's it talking about? The fish and cheese, we make Bayore. Cheese what? Are you making the fish, fish and, and chips by order? What do you mean by order? Do you cook it in advance sometimes? No, you're not free cooking nothing. Oh, shit, no. They fry fish off in advance? Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, Jesus well, Christ. Know, do you know the way to cook a burger faster? A burger takes 10 minutes to cook. You can't cook a burger faster. When it's cooked, we send it. Uh, OK. OK, here we go. Hello, how are you? We have two homemade specials, the shepherd's pie and fish and chips. I'll have the uh, fish and chips. Is there many of the shepherd's pie? I'll have the fish and chips. Mitch, here we go. First table's here, yes? Where are you going? Stay here. Oh. Where's he gone? I don't know where he's oh, gone. Yeah, Timbuktu or fucking Island. I don't know where he's... What do you want? Relax. I told you to stay there. I'm not going anywhere. No way. Are you anybody's bitch tonight? Come on. OK. I need one fish and chips special and three shepherd pie specials. Cheers, Mitch. Mario's the only one that's listening to Mitch. Everybody got me, right? Hello down there. I need beer-battered Irish sausage and chips. Yes, Mitch! Yes, Mitch! Listen up. I need a fish and chips, a shepherd's pie, and a sliced steak. Yes, 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 Mitch. yes, Mitch! It appears as though Mitch and the kitchen are now on the same page, and the cooks are beginning to fill the orders. Mitch, which table? What did she say, 40? 
Huh? I don't have it. I don't know. I'll have to wait. She comes back. Oh, Jesus. But Chef Ramsey notices another potential communication problem. Don't you have a copy of the tickets? No, I don't have it. An expediter needs the control of the tickets. Wow. We haven't even got a decent POS system. Jesus Christ. So there's the order. I need that now. Just get it. Yeah. There's confusion with the dupes all the time because it's all handwritten. It's so antiquated. It's just, it's ridiculous. Come on, guys. Tickets are piling up. Una mozzarella steak. Aquí va. You hear this? I did, but it's fine. I don't think so. While the chefs rush to push food out. Just stop. That was the French onion soup. Little attention is being paid to quality control. Just stop for two seconds. Look, we cannot serve that. We cannot go to this extent and try to start building a reputation and serving that. When you're the expediter, you're the last point of control. Control, right. So right. your standards are there. Their standards are there. You've got to start putting in some structure. Come on, Mitch, All please. Right. This one here. We're working on it, Chief. Yeah, right now, they're going out. Time. Well, get the fuck out. Fish and chips, 43. After a slow start... Fish and chips. Food is now making its way out to the diners. Everything's good? OK. And while the new specials are making a good impression... It definitely tastes like an actual Irish dish. Yeah. The regular menu... I just it's like raw. It's like raw. ...isn't impressing anyone. That's disgusting. This is gross. Do you want to take that again, please? My apologies. Okay, hon? That's so it's medium well. And that's medium rare. Come on. It's supposed to be medium well. Right, here's another burger, medium well. Where's the standard? What burger? Come on, guys. How could you fuck up a hamburger? I'm still so upset. Medium, yes? Yes. Come here. All of you come here. <sighs> Touch it. It's fucking raw. Did you check it? I didn't. Come on. Mario, all I want is a burger. A fucking burger. Come on. What the fuck is going on? Mitch, I'm watching your mistakes. See if you can go outside and say hi to people. No, I All can't right? go out. All right? Because no food You're not helping out. any. You're not doing anything here, so what good are you? Two hours into dinner service, and the kitchen is beginning to unravel. It sucks! This is nice it's cold. With dish... Is that our too rare? rare? After dish... The penny's raw? Coming back. Oh, sorry, yeah, just, uh, would you mind just take that away for two seconds? I'm so sorry. Sure. Excuse me. We've got two seconds. Good uh, morning. What is that? Let me just tell you something. When I was busting my chops earlier, making it for you, I turned my back for five minutes and you send that out. Chef. Chef. Come on, guys. On the back of 115 customers in two and a half hours, resolved to that. Chef Ramsay was just like, to hell with all of you. There's no passion, there's no care for any of the food coming out. All you fuckers get paid? Where's the worry on your faces? If you're my brigade, I would have fired you fucking 16 years ago. You, 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 and fucking you! The dinner service is now approaching three hours. It's raw. And a steady stream of dishes has been returned to the kitchen. If you're my brigade, I would have fired you fucking 16 years ago. Chef Ramsay is fed up, and he knows he needs to make an unusual move to save this restaurant. Hi, James, it's Gordon. Yeah, listen, uh, buddy, I need some help. Um, I need it quickly. Um, can you get uh, yourself down here? The grasshopper, please. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two more, right? Back inside the restaurant. What's going on with the last one? The final orders of the night go out. Thank you very much. Have a good night. That was a disaster. Brutal. That was very brutal. In shock, I'm drained. I'm tired. <sighs> that was rough. A real freaking disaster. In there, they turn up, they pick up the check, and they piss off home. They're not here for you. I realized I had to do something drastic. I've called a very talented local chef 
and he just got here. James, please. This guy's worked at some of the best restaurants in America. Yes, chef. Good to see you. You too. Tomorrow, he's going to work with me and implement a standard here that needs to be put in place to move forward. And by the way, he's not only a chef, he's Irish. Tomorrow, we relaunch, we stick together as a team, and we kick ass. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, thank you. Thank you very much. After the arrival of Chef James, Chef Ramsay decided to go ahead with his overnight plan of giving the dreary grasshopper a much needed makeover. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is the beginning of the new grasshopper. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Ready? Let's go. Come and have a look. Welcome to the new grasshopper. No. Oh, my Chief. God. Look my at God. this. My God. Love it. That looks awesome. awesome. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely yeah. fabulous. Gone are the dark, dingy colours. The green walls have gone. Very exciting. Welcome to the new, beautiful, vibrant colour. Awesome. Yeah. The mahogany looks uh, much nicer green. with the champagne wall. It's incredible. It's bright. It's cheery. Oh, Everything oh, is beautiful. Oh. Mitch, are you happy? Yes, I am. Yeah? Good. Yeah. Maureen, are you happy? Yeah? Come on. You guys have got to come together. Thank yes? You. Thank you. We replaced the old stained glass. We've got some modern-style lamp. I love these lamps. Mitch, you happy? Does it put an extra spring in your step? It's great. I love it. It's a breath of fresh air. This table, beautiful. A local artist designed it. Look how good this looks in here. This is unbelievable. It's positioned in the centre of the room, so it becomes a sort of focal family table. This whole thing has just got a breath of fresh air to it. Happy? OK. There is life back in this place. I can't wait to see our customers' faces when they first come to see the new improved grasshopper. I did make one more significant change. Annette, put your hands on that box. You've been stuck in the dark ages with this horrendous way of taking orders. This is now going to make your life so much easier. Oh. Extraordinary. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. The state of the art POS system by Halo. I can't even imagine how much it's going to change everything for us. It's going to make you so much yeah. more efficient. I'm telling you this, so unbelievable. Come here. Come here, come here, come here. Uh, you're an amazing guy. <laughs> Tonight, we have got to make to it make happen. It. We have to be it. on top of it all tonight. Mitch looked at me, and he had tears in his eyes, and he said, maybe this is our opportunity. The change in the decor will make the grasshopper more inviting, but the most critical makeover has been made to the menu. Gone are the greasy, tired, uninspired dishes, and in its place are new, vibrant Irish-American dishes that are not only pleasing to the eye, but rich in taste and flavor. Welcome to the grasshopper new menu. Clearly smaller. Why is it smaller? Quality controlling the costs and trying to get consistent. Irish potato skins, fresh mozzarella sticks, corned beef with carrots and potatoes, the house burger with Irish cheddar, shepherd's pie with the most amazing mash. Chief, especially for you, Irish ale stew. Unbelievable. When he came along and showed us that Irish menu, the way he had it made up, and said, this is it. It's absolutely gorgeous. The new menu is fabulous. I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. Get the staff, a little taste. This food has spirit, life to it, so it'll change this place. Just like Mama used to make it. Chief, you need to be honest, firm, firm. and you can't stop no, being firm. No, no. And you call as you say it. No, no. And they have to listen to you. Do you know why? Because you're wise. That's right. Well, You've I'm had more... success in your yeah. life. Yeah. There's only one chief, and you're it. Yeah, OK. folks, welcome to the Grasshopper. This is our new menu. The whole new menu just looks delicious. I'm going to have the potato, the beef potato soup. Shepherd's pie. Tonight, Chef James will be behind the line, overseeing the cooks. You got all your sauces. Keep turning. And Mitch, who is desperate not to repeat last night's disaster, will be expediting. All right, can I get a two beer battered shrimp, lamb sliders? Give me five. Give me five soups. Five potato soup all day. I got this. You do the soup. Come on. OK, you got to put more parsley on this. With Chef James controlling the line. You keep that and put it in the window. Don't worry. He doesn't need to take it. Oh, 41, Amit. 41. Here you go. Thank you. Right. Let's go. Appetizers are moving out quickly to the customers. This is really good. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Now the pressure shifts to Mitch to keep the kitchen organized and the momentum going. All right, just fire the, uh... What do you have? I need a beer-battered shrimp 
and a pit and a ham and pea soup. Can you can you call it again, please? When I was watching Mitch expedite, I noticed that he wasn't communicating with the line the way he should have been, and he was getting himself backed up. That's gonna be. This is gonna get fucked up here. Mitch, I don't, I don't like another this. order. Mitch, come on, you gotta talk to him, Mitch. You, 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 All right, come on, guys, let's go. All right. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. Fire the entrees. He's gonna cook what you tell him. Okay, I'm sorry. I need a poor boy. I need two poor boys. Lamb sliders, two shrimp, four battered shrimp, three battered shrimp. The first appetizers went out brilliantly. We have a real problem in the kitchen, and that's Mitch's expediting. You gotta get a system going. Just think. You gotta get a system going. If this guy was an air traffic controller, he'd be landing planes at the wrong frickin' airport. Appetizers. While customers anxiously wait for their food. I think that might be the only thing we might have tonight. So. <laughs> you got your food yet? We didn't get it yet. Chef Ramsay is still waiting for Mitch to step up and take control of his kitchen. I've got fish and chips and Irish stew. Is that a way or an order? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Come on! Mitch, you cannot do that to us. With the kitchen at a complete standstill. Mitch, 35 needs their food. Dad, please. A frustrated chief tries to help out. Mitch. Out of the kitchen. But it's not exactly welcomed. Don't fuck with me. Shut up. What are you telling me to shut up? I said shut up. That's not right. Get out of the kitchen. I said shut up. Just stop. Just stop. No. Stop. Hey, Mario. Stop. It's relaunch night at the Grasshopper. Come on! And despite providing Mitch with a new tasty menu, and Chef James to supervise the cooks, you keep that and put it in the window. Don't worry, he doesn't need to take it. Mitch's failure in the kitchen has resulted in a battle between his wife and his father in law. Shut up! What are you telling me to shut up? I said shut kitchen. up! Just stop! No, stop! Hey! And Chef Ramsay has had enough. We are not going to continue along these lines. James! I'm sorry. Come round, please. Mitch, I want you assisting James. James, I want you expediting. All right, guys, let's go. Regroup. For the first time in 16 fucking years. Work together. Yes. Let's start again. Take over, please. Chef, I need those five soups right away. Listen and assist him. I am. Potato skin, you need this first. Right now. Thank you. All right, that's going. Well, run it out there, Mitch. Run it out there. I am. Finally, I found a job for Mitch. He's running food out. Potato skins. What table number? Where are you going with them? Where are you going with them? Potato skins? It's 22. I was going with food and a table set. I didn't order that. Shepherd's pie. Oh, no, I got pasta. No, she got pasta. I was going to all the wrong tables. Oh, this sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. Table 40, run her, please. All right. Mitch, get out. You, let's go. We're making progress. Let's go. Chip away at this. Chef Ramsay's decision to move Mitch out of the kitchen and replace him with Chef James as the expediter. Guys, I have three tickets in front of me. We're almost there. Has completely turned around dinner service. Customers are now getting their food. I really go. And are thrilled with what they are getting. Definitely coming back. I'm out of tickets, so guys, that's it. All right, thank you very thank much. Thank you, guys. As a difficult dinner service finally comes to an end, Chef Ramsay knows he has to have a difficult conversation with the owners. OK, I'm going to be brutally honest. This restaurant will not succeed unless you make the necessary staff changes. And you can make it work, Mitch. I know you weren't professionally trained, but it's down to you. Yes. I brought you James the expertise that you desperately need to get this ship back on course. Take advantage of James. Listen to him. Do it. And do it quick. Good night, guys. Change is scary. Good luck. But we got to take his advice and make the right decisions. This has been one of the most toughest nightmares I've ever done. Because this restaurant has everything it needs to succeed, except one thing, a leader. I just wish that Chief was 20 years younger. 
because right now, there's no one in there that can fill his shoes. Mitch, 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 Mitch. Only days after Chef Ramsay left, Chef Mario was shown the door. I need a house pasta, shrimp only, no veggies. The owners convinced Chef James to stay on as a consultant and properly train the kitchen staff. Mitch and great. And in the weeks that followed, Mitch took Chef Ramsay's advice to heart. That's easy, right? And it's sexy. Fast and furious. Learning from Chef James. No bun for the turkey burger and just fresh foots it out. And finally, becoming the leader the grasshopper always needed. Make it nice or make it twice. I have changed, yes. My focus is 100% in that kitchen. Thank you, folks. Everything was good? Everything was good. OK, great.